Coming in at number 10, we have the Mornak Ship Graveyard in Uzbekistan. This ship graveyard showcases the destructive power that man can have on his environment. This area used to be lush with life, and it was home to the Ariel Sea. This was a massive salt lake that housed one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. It was teeming with life not just below the surface, but above it as well. There were thousands of people that called the borders of this sea home. It was where people would fish and live. An entire industry was built around this lake, but when the government government wanted to use the waters to expand the agriculture influence in the area, they started to funnel water out of the lake through the man-made rivers, and slowly but surely, they shrank down the sea and the salt levels skyrocketed. It was eventually too salty for anything to live in the lake. Eventually everything died off and everyone who used to live around there had to find other means of survival. Now the whole area is a desert that houses the rusted remains of ships that once traveled the aerial sea. In at 9, the SS Mahano. The SS Mahano actually has quite the interesting story. Originally a passenger ship, during World War I, New Zealand converted the vessel into a floating hospital of sorts. After the war, though, it was returned to a passenger ship, which in my mind is kind of freaky. Like, like, yeah, this is a passenger ship now, but it used to house hundreds of wounded soldiers. Totally worth the ticket price. But I'm guessing the whole floating hospital thing kind of hurts sales, since the ship was sold to an Osaka shipbreaker company in 1935, who intended to tear it apart for scrap metal. However, the ship never made it to the buyer. A cyclone had severed the tow line connected to the Una, the ship that was doing the towing. You can now see the wreck on Google Earth on the beach of Fraser Island off the coast of Queensland, Australia. There was also a small crew on board that luckily survived, but if the ship was in such a state that it had to be towed, why was there a crew on it? Like maybe it was to maintain the ship or something, but I mean like if it was going to be used for scrap metal anyway, does it really matter? In our 8th spot today we have Costa Concordia. On January 13th of 2012, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia crashed into underwater rocks in shallow waters that they didn't see coming. The impact left damage to the ship and it started to sink. Eventually it capsized completely and sank to the ground. The rescue took a total of 6 hours and most passengers did make it back on shore. Sadly, 34 people lost their lives in this tragedy, 27 passengers, 5 crew members, and 2 rescue workers. The ship was unsalvageable, so it was left on the coast of Giglio Island in Italy, where it sunk. Images of the sunken ship have been captured on Google Earth. There are multiple photos of the ship laying on its side, and over the years you can see the ship become more and more deteriorated. And it's 7 to St. Christopher. The St. Christopher will likely spend the rest of its days, those in, in days in a sense being eternal because it's a ship, in the harbor of Ushuaia in southern Argentina. The ship, as a part of the Land Lease Act, was an American built rescue tugboat that served in the British Royal Navy during World War II. The Navy decommissioned it after the war and sold it to a man in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1947. It was chartered for salvage operations but ran into engine trouble and rudder damage in the Beagle Channel by Ushuaia. The St. Christopher ran ashore in 1957 and was abandoned with the remaining fuel being drained to prevent an environmental disaster. But not until 2004. Great hustle, gents. Nearly 50 years later, huh? Really got your priorities sorted. I guess I had you looking in the wrong section. How could I be so stupid? I really hope that this, that trend isn't dead when this goes out. It might be. Coming in at number 6, we have the SS Jasm. This ship holds the title for one of the largest shipwrecks ever seen on Google Earth. The SS Jasm was a Bolivian cargo ferry that sunk on the Wingate Reef off the coast of Sudan. On the evening of December 1st, 2003, this ship sunk and to this day, it is still unclear as to why it sunk. On Google Earth, you can see this big white ship laying on its side, in the same position where it capsized. Besides that, the ship remains a mystery. Now it's another popular dive spot for scuba divers and and snorkelers. Halfway through and at number 5, the Garden of Eden. Now, I'm not a religious man per se, but I know the stories. The Garden of Eden was meant to be a utopia. Adam was placed here and told that he could eat from any tree aside from the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. They end up eating from the tree anyway and then are cast out of the garden. Well, in layman's terms at least. But there are many theories or ideas as to where this garden was on Earth. Some think that it wasn't on Earth, but multiple renditions place it in Iraq. One of them specifically claiming Basra as the location of the garden, which only makes this giant vessel off the coast even more intriguing. In the northwest section of Arvind Rood, you can see a capsized ship roughly 150 meters long and just over 50 meters offshore. And apparently, this isn't the only shipwreck in Arvind Rood either. Just the, the only one that you can see, particularly from Google Earth. 
Coming in at number four, we have the SS Francisco Morazin. On November 27th of 1960, the SS Francisco Morazin left Chicago and headed out towards Holland. They had 940 tons of cargo aboard the ship. However, they never made it to their destination. By day two of traveling, they ran into a wild snowstorm. The wind speed was going 40 miles per hour, and as a result, water was being swept aboard the ship. Not only that, but they couldn't see anything. They were blinded by the snow and heavy fog. With their vision being impaired, they accidentally sailed their ship right into shallow water, trapping them by South Manitou Island. Now, the crew ended up abandoning the ship and it was just left there. The ship's owner never came forward and claimed it, so it was literally left there to rot. You can still see it today, just chilling in Lake Michigan. Getting close to the end, and in number three, Skeleton Coast. Skeleton Coast sits just north of Luteritz in Namibia, and was named thanks to the countless whale and sea bones that had once littered the shore, thanks to its whaling history. However, nowadays, it's more so home to the skeletal remains of shipwrecks that are commonly caught ashore by rocks and fog. The 976 mile long, or 1,570 kilometers for the rest of the world, Skeleton Coast is littered with shipwrecks, and that's due to, if you don't mind a little science, when the Atlantic's cold currents mix with the warm air of the Namib Desert, they end up creating a cold, dense fog. The kind that Scooby-Doo would like cut a burger out of using a dead pirate sword and then eat the burger, not the sword. According to BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, you crazies, the Khoisan Bushmen refer to Skeleton Coast as the land God created in anger, which is a whole other can of worms that I'm not gonna touch. Seems like a fun vacation spot though, if you want to get smitten by Chuck. In our second spot, we have the MS World Discoverer. And sadly, this one did not get to discover the world. The MS World Discoverer was a Danish cruise ship that was constructed in 1974. And for over 25 years, it changed ownership a number of times. That was until one day on April of 2000 when it took its last cruise. It was sailing in the Pacific Ocean when it struck an uncharted reef formation. Thankfully, all the passengers were rescued. The crew sent out a distress signal and a passenger ferry came to their help. All passengers were put on the passenger ferry. Now, before anyone could arrange to save the ship, it was actually ransacked and looted by locals. They then decided that saving the ship would be far too expensive and tough, so it wouldn't be worth it. So they left it there ever since. On Google Maps, you can see this ship just chilling on its side. And finally, in at number one, the Costa Verde. An avid UFO hunter looking for signs of alien activity on Google Earth believes that he had discovered three new shipwrecks. Scott C. Waring posted his discovery on the website ufosightingsdaily.com, which usually features details of alleged UFO or alien sightings, a website that I didn't know existed until now, but I'm definitely gonna have to look it up later. The alien hunter highlighted three three dark boat-shaped objects in the shallow area off the coast of Costa Verde, which is a really weird thing to say, but in Mexico. He posted on May 4th, 2017, quote, You know me, always searching for the hidden mysteries of life. Well, today I stumbled upon something that's not a UFO, but is still absolutely amazing due to its size. One wreck, the first on his list, was 138 meters long, which is more than half the length of the Titanic, which you are also able to find on Google Earth, but you have to type in the coordinates to, to where it sunk. You can't actually see the wreck. Here's the coordinates if you want to look it up for yourself. It should be here somewhere. He also found a 61 meter long ship and a 12 meter long fishing boat in the same area, which makes me think maybe he did find evidence of aliens. Oh. Number 10, the Costa Concordia. Hey, we all like to show off. Maybe there's a girl watching and you want to impress her, or maybe you never resolve that deep regret of not pushing yourself harder in high school football. But sometimes you need to remember that you're at work and it's not the time to try to show off to people and show them how cool you think you are. Well, back in 2012, the captain of the Costa Concordia thought he would show everyone on the boat of an Italian cruise ship how good of a captain he was by performing a sail by. So just so you know, this is nothing like a drive by. Everything on boats is nicer. Like drinking and driving, bad. Drinking and boating, that's the only way you can get people on a boat. A sail by is when you swoop in close to a landmass to take a close look. What ended up happening is the captain misjudged how close he could get and crashed into it. After this, he tried to be a hero and help everyone on the ship. Just kidding, he abandoned ship. He treated crashing into the island like hiding pieces of that broken vase when you were playing kickball inside and your mom got mad at you. He later was arrested for manslaughter and abandoning ship. 
Bummer. Coming in at number nine, we have Miss World Discover Solomon Island. This is the worst nightmare for every single retired person who loves to spend their time going on cruises. In the 70s, the Miss World Discover was working as a cruise ship, and while swooping by the Solomon Island, the captain made a huge mistake. He came too close to the island shore and hit a massive rock which pierced through the hull of the ship. So what happened to the 2,000 people that were on board the ship? Well, they were all eaten by sharks and now the place is called the Shark Graveyard. I'm just kidding, that didn't actually happen at all. Actually, not a single person died. Everyone on board managed to make it to the lifeboats, they made it to the shore of the island, and then the island had an operating ferry for tourists to visit. This was all very convenient. So it took a few trips, but they were all able to make it home safely. Coming in at number 8, we have the Mediterranean Sky in Greece. Let's go over to a massive cruise liner that was built all the way back in the 50s. I'm not sure how long a boat is good for, but it would weird me out knowing that you're setting sail on something that is older than my parents. I think when I'm putting my faith in something that's supposed to take me across the ocean, I want to make sure that the blueprints have the latest updates. But even though this ship had a long career, it never saw any problems. The reason that it became a wreck was actually due to lack of use. It was sitting in a Greek harbor harbor for over two years, and then one day, the ship started to take on water. I don't know if you guys know this about boats, but that is very bad. Well, the owners of the boat didn't have the means to fix it, but they also didn't want to lose it to the murky depths of Davy Jones' locker. So they managed to get the boat to some shallow waters, and they got it stuck on land. It stayed there for a time until the boat broke open, and then it was laid there as a wreck. It's now a tourist attraction. I'm kind of realizing that going to see a giant shipwreck is like going to check out a big piece of garbage, but I still want to go for some reason. Coming in at number 7, we have the Bessie White from Fire Island, New York. That sounds like the most brutal place to be shipwrecked. Fire Island? It sounds like there would be an active volcano there, and a bunch of locals there that want to tie you up and take you to the mouth of the volcano so they can sacrifice you. But it turns out it's actually a pretty peaceful place. The Bessie White was an old schooner that was mainly used to haul coal throughout America. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. The ship crashed off the coast of the island in the 20s, and a pretty penny worth of coal was lost to the world, and I bet a bunch of people were fired that day. You don't make a six-figure mistake and then just walk into work the next day like nothing happened. For a long time, the boat was gone to the world, but the changing shorelines revealed where it was left. You can go visit the boat whenever you want, but you just have to make it to Fire Island. So that might be a pass for me. Next on the list, we have the SS Maheo on Fraser Island, Australia. This ship was originally a Navy ship, but it came in contact with a very intense cyclone, and now it sits on the shore of Fraser Island. The metal skeleton sits on the beach and looks just as dangerous as it is. Some people think that it would be a good idea to climb and enter the wreckage, and many of them learn quickly that there's nothing in there but pain. Many people have hurt themselves in the wreckage of the ship trying to get too close for photo ops or the perfect selfie. And it doesn't help that Fraser Island is already known for being dangerous from the aggressive wildlife that lives on the island. So if you go there for a visit, try not to draw blood while you explore. You don't want a pack of dingoes to be the last thing you see. Next on the list is the USTA Liberty in Bali, Indonesia. Now we're finally getting to a battleship. The USTA was smashed in the hull by a Japanese torpedo in 1942 just off the coast of Bali. It was extremely close to the shore, only 30 meters away, so most of the men on board were able to abandon ship and swim to the shore. And even though the ship has a dark past, it is now a prime time location for snorkeling and free diving. The wreck is only 9 meters underwater, so you can swim right out to it and dive down to find a wide array of sea life living on it. That's not a bad way to spend your afternoon, just have to forget that it's down there because of World War II. Coming in at number 4, we have the AA Airfield. At first glance, this ship looks like it was set up for an apocalypse movie, but you will quickly learn that it's actually just one of the most beautiful wrecks ever. It's just off the coast of Australia, and even though the ship is a giant hunk of dead metal, life has chosen it as a spot to create. There are trees growing out through the hull of this dead ship. They reach out through the top of the wreckage. Something that used to be a giant hunk of garbage has now become a marine and vegetation sanctuary. Coming in next on the list, we have the SS Thistlegrome in the Red Sea, Egypt. One of the most famous wrecks in the world, the SS Thistlegrome was doing its duty in World War II when it was shot down and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. But being a casualty of war was not what makes this ship so interesting. It's everything that was on board. Taking a dive down to this wreck is like stepping into a time machine. Old rifles, motorcycles, and army supplies are all stuffed away inside this wreckage. Some people say that 
salvaging some of the goods could be worth thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but the wreck is now a protected reef, so there's no way you can bring that stuff back to the surface without breaking the law. It's all looking and no touching. We have the MV Panagotis in Zakynthos Island, Greece. I can't believe it took us this long, but we finally made it to a pirate shipwreck. It's not an old school pirate shipwreck that has black sails and a bunch of scurvy ridden hooligans who are constantly drunk on rum. No, this pirate ship was operating back in the 80s. It would come to a place known as Smuggler's Cove. This is considered the most beautiful beach in all of Greece. The waters are crystal clear, and the only way you can get there is by boat unless you can swim like Aquaman. This is why it was such a hot spot for smugglers to bring goods in and out of Greece. Well, one day, the captain of the Panagotis was feeling a little bit bold and he brought the ship in way too close and it hit land. The crew did what they could to try and get the boat loose but there was nothing they could do. It now sits on the shore of the beach as an added tourist attraction. And number one on the list is the SS Yonglanga, Queensland, Australia. Alright, grab your scuba gear because you're gonna need to head underwater for this next wreck. If you want to visit this one, you're gonna need your PADI certification because there is no way you're going to get face to face with this wreck unless you've got a scuba tank or some serious free diving lungs. When the Yolonga went down, it was not a pretty sight. It was actually a tragedy and a very scary one at that. A cyclone came through when the boat was out at sea, and even though they had a skilled crew, nothing could handle the massive swells that were thrown at them. The ship was ripped down underwater and 122 people died in the wreck. On the bright side, the wreck is now teeming with life. In the 109 years that the ship has been sitting at the bottom of the ocean, it has collected a ton of coral and marine life that call it home. This place is a scuba paradise. You can see everything from octopuses, manta rays, sea turtles, to tiger sharks. Not to mention the whole wreck is covered head to toe in coral. Some say it is the most beautiful sunken ship in the world. Starting off this countdown, we have the Half Moon Schooner Yacht. This was a German racing yacht that was built in 1908 Germany. The yacht was built as a wedding present for Count Gustav von Buglin und Halbach. Yeah, that was his full name. What a mouthful. Anyways, the yacht was eventually seized by the British during World War II and resold to become a US cabaret boat during the Prohibition era. In fact, its original name was the Germania, but when it resold, it got named the Half Moon. But the yacht ended up sinking during a terrible storm in 1930. Now it lies at the bottom of the ocean near Key Buscane, Florida. In fact, now it's a popular dive spot for snorkelers and divers. Number nine, the MS Estonia. Now here's Here's another case of people just not really doing their job right. The MS Estonia was a smaller transport ship, used sometimes as a cruise ship but mostly as a ferry. One day it was making a pretty standard trip from Estonia to Sweden and there was 989 people on board the boat at this time. So far so good, but the cargo on the boat hadn't been placed evenly on the boat so the weight distribution was off. While making the cross, the MS Estonia got hit with a major storm and the ship leaned over to one side and began to flood. It was a devastating loss. Almost every person on board didn't make it. Of the 989 people who went out, only 139 were picked up by the Coast Guard. If they had just put a little more effort into their job, like move a couple boxes to the other side of the boat, this might have not been a problem. Also, I have no idea how boats work, so maybe it was a little more complicated than that. You probably shouldn't listen to me. Number eight, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Super fun name. The year is 1975. A big tanker is trying to cross Lake Superior. This seems like it should have been the most chill voyage ever. You're crossing a lake. You're on a big boat. It sounds like the kind of job you can do while eating a sandwich in one hand and being very hungover. But it's on this list you already know something went wrong. I'm going to tell you the truth. I have no idea how this big guy sunk. There was no distress signal sent out. Maybe it was ghost pirates. Or it could have been the hurricane winds and the 35 foot swells that were happening on the lake that day. Something weird about this shipwreck is Gordon Lightfoot made a song about it. Who's Gordon Lightfoot? I have no idea. Maybe he would be more famous if he wasn't writing songs about sunken ships. How about next time you write a song about drugs, sex, and violence so I have something to listen to while I'm meditating. Number seven, Carnival Triumph. So this ship didn't sink, but it did get wrecked. And I had to include it on the list because it's an amazing story. So back in 2013, this cruise ship was out in the Gulf of Mexico. People were eating, drinking, partying. Everyone's diet was horrible. IBS was running smoke all over this ship. 
It was truly a great time. Then a fire broke out in one of the engine rooms. The fire was quickly put out by the safety systems on the ship, but it damaged the ship so everything lost power. It caused the motors to stop working and sewage to back up into the passenger areas. All those margarita fueled diarrhea squirts were all over everyone, overflowing out of the toilets and it was coming back to haunt them. Poop was everywhere. It was also super hot. A bunch of stinky turds baking in the sun. They were stuck out there for four days. Four days of poop fumes dancing in their little nose holes. I guess you could say they had a crap time. <laughs> Number six, the MV Lajula. Guys, we have rules for a reason. Don't run with scissors, you're gonna fall and cut yourself. Chew your food so you don't choke like a dog inhaling a bird. And when there's a capacity limit on something, maybe you should listen. The MV Lajula was making a trip from Senegal to Dakar back in 2002, and this bad boy was three times over its capacity limit. You know what would happen if I got pulled over and blew into a breathalyzer three times over the legal limit? Well, I bet I would have had a really good night and like jail or something. I don't know. Well, the people in charge of running this boat obviously didn't care about the rules or the poor weather conditions that they were running into. They hit a storm and the ship flipped in no time. And because the weather was so bad, it took a while for rescue workers to come grab them and almost no one was recovered. Yeah, huge bummer. Number five, the MTS Oceanos. If you ever go on a cruise ship, don't cheap out. Also, if you run a cruise ship, please take care of it. The MTS Oceanos was a case of neglect on several levels. First, the cruise ship was run down. This thing was littered with loose hull plates, a hole in the bulk, and some of the ship had been stripped for spare parts. This is like taking a cruise run by your buddy Kev with a 1999 Corolla and that has 1000 water bottles in it and a garbage bag window. Don't worry man, you'll get used to the smell. On its final voyage, an explosion happened in the engine room. This is where the second level of neglect comes in. The crew couldn't fix it, so they just dipped. They didn't sound any alarms, they didn't tell passengers, they were just like, sucks to suck, and took off. After the people were left to fend for themselves, it was an entertainer on board of the boat that sent out the distress call to save everyone. I don't know who this guy is, but he's got some major big dick energy. He saved a cruise ship full of people after all hope was lost. Dude, please be my dad. Number four, MV Dona Paz. This is a situation of bad thing after bad thing after another bad thing. The MV Dona Paz was a ferry going through some transport waters in the Philippines. It was filled to the brim with passengers. This was a night voyage so visibility was really poor. So poor that they didn't see the oil tanker coming right at them that they collided with. The MT Vector oil tanker crashed right into the Dona. This was a brutal crash, injuring many of the people on board of both ships. The oil inside the MT Vector caused a fire and there were now burning ships on both ends and oil spread into the water and literally burning oil on top of the water. People tried to save themselves by jumping into the water, but between the two ships, only 26 people survived. It was bad. Number three, the USS Arizona. On December 7th, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. When you listen to the old recording of that broadcast, it sounds like Palpatine. I wonder if when the Americans made the decision to join the war, someone in the back was like, do it, do it America. The sinking of the USS Arizona is of course one of the most famous of all times. It was an attack from the Japanese on the Americans, which brought the Americans into World War II. It was a major tragedy and only one third of the ship's crew ended up making it out alive. There's a memorial site at the sunken site to remember what happened that day. I don't know much about history, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it was a bad move to attack Pearl Harbor. It eventually led to the dropping of two atomic bombs, the most powerful bombs on the planet at that time. You could have said that those bombs had unlimited power. Number two, the Titanic. What can I tell you about this boat that you don't already know? Leonardo DiCaprio fell in love on it, he banged some chick in a car, and then he died of hypothermia. The end, I just saved you seven hours or however long that movie is. Trust me, you don't wanna waste your time watching that movie. An extended cut of Avengers Endgame just got announced and it's way more worth it. Well, for those of you that don't know, the Titanic was supposed to be a marvel of technology and thought to be completely unsinkable. 
They were so confident in the boat's ability that there wasn't enough lifeboats and there was no safety briefing given out to the passengers beforehand. The ship then smashed into an iceberg and some dude fell into a propeller and then a bunch of rich people froze to death. The end. I don't know if you guys heard about this but they built a second titanic that's going on the same route as the original boat. At least this time when it sinks I get to watch the whole thing happen on Instagram live. Number 1. Wilhelm Gustloff the sinking of the Wilhelm Gustloff was a major tragedy. It was the most lives lost in the sinking of a boat ever. Over 9,000 people died. It was back in 1945 when this boat was making its trip across Baltic waters. And I want everyone to understand that everyone on this boat was a civilian. There was no weapons, the ship wasn't smuggling anything, there was no secrets to be had on this boat. It was about halfway through its voyage when the Wilhelm Gustav was attacked by Soviet military. The Soviet battleship shot three torpedoes at the vessel, causing it to sink immediately. People were thrown from the ship just based on the force of the impact, but it wasn't the weapons that would be these people's fate, but the negative temperatures. Many people on board died from the freezing cold waters. 